The views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. Hello and welcome to Open 2.0. I'm your host, Henry. Our guest today is Theo Philippic. He has worked in video games, scripting, book editing, game design, and so much more. Welcome back to the show. Well, thank you for having me. I'm really happy, uh, happy to be here. So, Steele, you're a producer and a writer? Uh, that's correct, that correct, yes. All right, would you tell us, what was the most challenging project or con content that you've worked on? Uh, the, probably the most challenging project I worked on uh, would have been the Pirates of the Caribbean movies. Uh, it was the first major project I worked on uh, after college. Uh, I went from struggling and not having a lot of entertainment work to suddenly working for the Walt Disney Company through my company that I work for now, Starlight Runner Entertainment, working 60, 70 hours a week. I wasn't getting paid all that much. It was my first job, my first big job. Uh, I was expected to have a uh, high level of work on a regular basis to be on call. Um, but, you know, I persevered through it and pushed through it. It was hard at first, but after, you know, questioning whether I could make it, whether I was ever going to get real entertainment work, mm -hmm. uh, we finished the project to good results, and, you know, it, it kind of, it, you know, it validated my whole approach. Mm, sounds like a real struggle. Yes, it was. Can you tell us, like, since you got low amount of money, correct, at first? Yes, that's correct. How did you survive? Uh, a lot of sacrifices. I had the support of my friends and family, um, but it was uh, it was a struggle. I, I didn't eat really healthily. I was I had to get second jobs. I was a bartender. I was a janitor. I, I babysat. I was a nanny. I did anything that I could uh, to be able to make sure that I could go out and follow my dreams. I didn't go out and drink all that much. I had to cut back on travel. Uh, I had to you know choose what I wanted, and what I wanted was to be a, a professional in the entertainment industry, and that allowed me to stay on track. Uh, it allowed me to have a goal that I was working towards, and eventually, you know, the work got better and the pay got better. Uh, but it also you know made me really grateful uh, later on. You know that those struggles then, you know, I, I look back and I recognize that that built me into the uh, career, into the career that I have now. Now you're working in film. Correct? Yeah, absolutely. All right, would you tell us what type of movie genre do you think is strong the most? Would you say it would be drama, horror, romance? Well, what do you think? So I think outside of the Marvel movies, uh, I think that superhero, the superhero film as a genre, even in television, it's really, really struggling. Uh, you have the DC Universe, which can't seem to get its yes. act together. Yeah. Even some of Marvel shows, um, you know, people really like the first season of Jessica Jones. The second season was kind of a mix. Daredevil has gone through some issues. People hated Iron Fist and the Inhumans. Uh, so certain uh, X-Men movies have struggled. The, the first Daredevil movie completely flopped. You know, it's, it's hard. Uh, what Marvel gets right is that they are superhero for movies second. There's always some other element to them. So Ant-Man and the Wasp, it's a heist movie that happens to be a superhero movie. Uh, they have uh, Black Panther. Black Panther is a political drama uh, first, and uh, it's a superhero movie second. It's ditto Captain America. You know, they, they have these things. But other, other than that, if you don't have the right creative talent behind it, it's really hard to make an interesting superhero movie because at the end of the day, it's just about a bunch of people beating the tar out of one another. That's correct. Would you tell us, do you think that storytelling now and then has improved or gotten worse? Uh, I think that w the democratization of content has really opened up the floodgates for independent producers to create content that wouldn't have been possible before. There used to be three television channels. Now there are hundreds, and that's just on cable, let alone streaming video and YouTube. And uh, you know, go through that with music and film and video games. 
you know, and on one hand, it's great because you have people who would, would not have been able to produce content before and now able to do it in their spare time. Uh, a lot of people, uh, you know, Undertale was created essentially by one individual, and now he's, you know, a, a, a rock star in the video game uh, world. But at the same time, that means that there's going to be a lot more content out there. Uh, Netflix, when they first started out, everybody said, oh, they can do no wrong. Every television show they do is great. It's House of Cards and Orange is the New Black and the new Arrested Development. Now, you know, people look at Netflix as kind of this mishmash of a bunch of content just because there's so much out there. I think, you know, there is there's better content. There's more better content out there, but there's also more worse content just because there's more content uh, than ever before. All right. Um, would you tell us, with all these contents that are struggling, how do you think they can improve on themselves? Uh, content creators, I think the number one thing to do to improve yourself, to improve your writing, to improve your work is to just do it, to uh, not focus on making the best thing, but just going out and doing it and being free to fail. We mm -hmm. have so much technology uh, in our hands, literally in our fingertips, in our phone. Uh, we can uh, shoot a movie, we can audio, uh, do audio for it, we can edit it, we can distribute it. You know, as before, you know, I was, I was taught how to edit on a Steam Deck, you know, on literal, on film, and you'd cut it and splice it together. And now you can do that on the phone, just going out and doing, work with, working with your friends, taking a, a Saturday, instead of going out and getting drunk or partying, uh, getting together four people and working on a screenplay together, working on four different screenplays, four different four-minute mm -hmm. shorts. You get that, you've got you know, four shorts that you can go out and shoot, and you can work on your own uh, pieces. You know, just focusing on, focusing on your craft and creating content and learning uh, so that when your time comes, you're ready to take that opportunity and seize it, because sometimes it only comes once. Mm -hmm. So working with what you got. Mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. Have you done anything like that? Or yes, like absolutely. Uh, one of the uh, pieces I've worked on uh, it's an audio drama called Queens of the Sapphire Sea. Uh, it was uh, me and two other producers. We, were, uh, we wanted to have an outlet to create a show, like a television show, and we wanted to have a, a writer's room uh, to be able to work on content. And with that audio drama, we were able to hire actors and record them and do pretty much everything you would do in a television show, except it wasn't, it wasn't filmed. We just you know, recorded the audio. And we had a lot of inspiration. New York was the, uh, one of the birthplaces of audio drama, radio drama, back in the 30s and 40s uh, with WCBS and WNBC. And we looked into these archives, and we realized we could just we could do it. And it was we did not expect it to uh, turn a profit, but we've gotten you know thousands and thousands of hits uh, from people who want to download and have adventure and experience excitement in a way that only audio drama can present it. And it's you know it's gotten me work, it's gotten my other producers work. It's just been a lot of fun, and that was from three guys who decided let's do something together that we can you know that we can control. What a way to start. Yeah. <laughs> All right, thank you. We have to take a quick break, but stay tuned for more Open 2.0 right after this. neighbors and best friends. I love my sister. My heart, my heart doesn't, doesn't see race. race. Love, love is love. Our family is no less than any other family. How can I help my daughter with her reading? Searching for help with Dachshund reading. No. <laughs> Let me try. Sarah's bright, but when she's reading, she has trouble sounding out words. Playing world music. What? I give up. Wait, I was trying to show you how Sarah feels every day. Frustrating, isn't it? Redirecting to understood.org. Join parents and experts at understood.org, a free online resource about learning and attention issues to help your child thrive.
Welcome back to Open 2.0. We just we continue with Steel Philippec. Okay. So you mentioned on your website that you do audio drama. Yeah, absolutely. Do a T lot of audio drama. Tell us about that. So um, we uh, the current work that we're doing uh, is a season two of Radio Room, uh, which is a collaboration between myself and another uh, producer. Uh, I'm also uh, starting up a, a nonfiction podcast called Building a Better Story World, mm -hmm. uh, produced uh, right here at Lehman College. And what I've found is that it's a great avenue uh, for young people to get their voices and get their content out there. Uh, all you need is a mixing board and a microphone and a laptop or something that you can record onto and you can audio and edit it. And the budget is really, really small. You find a niche, you find something you're passionate about, whether it's audio drama or it's cooking or it's politics, and you just talk about it. And you can edit that together fairly quickly and there's mm -hmm. something for everybody. And because the budgets are so low and because it's about passion, you know, you can record a month's worth of content in an an afternoon and a day and then slowly stagger it out and get advertisers and you know if you have if you have a comic book that sells 2,000 copies you're kind of struggling if you have a podcast that's getting 2,000 copies uh, 2,000 uh, downloads you're on the way up you know it's a great way to get content out there okay so you working on audio like what would you say is your main goal would you say it's filming since mm -hmm. you're a film person mm -hmm. or would it be audio at the moment so right now uh, I've, for me um, I've stopped trying to pigeonhole myself into a particular genre. Like, I love writing for television, and I want to write more for television, want to write more for film, want to write more video games. Uh, but what I've come to discover is that I like working in multiple media. I like what audio drama can do that film can't. Each of these media uh, has a strength that the other does not, and they all have weaknesses, too. And part of the fun is working with that weakness. With audio, you have no visual. Uh, so you have to be able to set the scene, set the tone, set everything with just uh, voices, a little bit of music and a little bit of sound effects. And that's exciting because in film, it's all visual. You know, you have dialogue and obviously, you know, Aaron Sorkin will write a 200 page script and just people like chatting back and forth with one another. But it's also you know, amazing to write something that's purely visually driven. And I like that challenge. I like being able to switch uh, from place to place. And that was also one of the reasons that I was able to begin to succeed, because I was uh, able to write in these different formats. So that would be my advice to other people. You know, if you want to get into the industry, uh, just you know, don't say no. Try to mm -hmm. say yes. Try to push your boundaries and feel free to fail. Okay, well, thank you. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you, Steele, for joining us, and thank you for tuning in. Thank you very You can much. catch more to Open 2.0 on BronxNet. Until next time, I'm Henry. Thank you very much, right, sir. Thank you, sir. school, I think it's an air raid. A lot of houses in our neighborhood have been destroyed. I like to close my ears and sing songs whenever the bombs come close. I'm worried our new neighbors won't like us. But I know it's all going to be worth it. I just want my family to be safe. But these are not my these words. These are not my words. These are not my words.